Welcome to On the Couch, a regular catch up where we discuss some of the issues facing marketing and hopefully come up with some solutions. Today I'm joined by the Managing Director of eHarmony, Nicole McGinnis. Welcome, Nicole, to my couch. Thank you, Darren. It's great to be here. Well, look, I've, I've been wanting to get you on the couch for quite a while. I won't take that the wrong way. No, to talk about <laughs> um, marketing leadership, because now you've got a significant leadership role in uh, eHarmony, and you've also been quite outspoken. But I'm wondering, as a business leader, but with a, a very strong marketing background, where do you turn to to get thought leadership from others? I'm doing a lot of non-fiction reading, which is unusual for me because I used to only stick to novels so that I can... Being creative. Yeah, maintain my creativity. But um, I'm really enjoying um, audio books at the moment because you can multitask as well, which is very exciting. The last one I read was The Undoing Project by Michael Lewis, who also wrote Moneyball. And it was okay. about the forefathers of um, behavioural economics. So it skips way past business and straight into what makes humans tick, which I find fascinating. And that's so important because it's so much part of marketing and business today. Yeah. Is that because ultimately it's about customers. Yeah. And creating customers. The great thing that, that um, I think it's Amos Zersky, I'll get the pronunciation wrong for sure, and Danny Ackerman say is that the biases that we carry around with us make us so illogical in our decision making oh, every day. Absolutely. And so we've sort of got really pragmatic and really, um, you know, we, we've got machine learning involved and algorithms and everything in the way that we market to people, but people are not getting more pragmatic in the way they buy products. So it's important to sort of keep in mind the, the crazy, emotional, illogical sort of human at the end of our communications and how we have to work with them. Because, you know, a lot of the leadership thinking mm. seems to be coming from overseas. You know, it seems to be coming from yeah. the US and the uh, and the UK and Europe, and, yeah. and especially around uh, digital and uh, data-informed and, mm. and this, uh, uh, from Silicon Valley, you know, selling mm. marketers. Why is it that we don't seem to have the same strength of marketing leadership here in this country. I don't know why. I have a theory, but and it's a little bit controversial. Give it to us. Because we're a small market, there seems to be a bit of the, it's better to employ someone you know or work with before than somebody who's, a, who's the best for the job. Mm -hmm. And I think that that sort of propagates itself into this not getting great leadership in in marketing in this sort of small sort of echo jar of people mm, that are just the echo of, chamber. We just all yeah, agree with each other. Yeah, and, and just rotate around through the different CMO roles. So I think the US has got an advantage in that it's size, highly yeah, yeah highly competitive, high volume of talent to choose from. But doesn't that go back to what you mentioned just a minute ago, which is that we have all these biases. So doesn't that just yeah, increase true. the amount of bias of just doing the same thing over and over again? Well, that's right. You don't, if you hire someone you know and you're comfortable with, they're not going to challenge you. You're hiring for that reason. You're mm. hiring for comfort and loyalty rather than for innovation, challenge, change that, that is uncomfortable most of the time. So yeah, they, and I love how it's often hidden in the phrase, the catchphrase, if we get people that you know and you vouch for, then the culture will be sustained. But you know, sometimes that culture needs to be disrupted. Or becomes inbred. <laughs> yes, that's right. Because you've actually come, you know, quite an interesting path through, mm. you know, creative and then working on what's considered a very data performance driven yeah. uh, business at Dell. Yes. Uh, and then, you know, through media and now yeah. to uh, eHarmony. Mm. So how important on that path has it been for you to have uh, leaders that you can look towards? I think it's really important to have um, guidance. My The biggest sort of change, I think, to my career trajectory came with an exec coach. So I actually got sort of outside of marketing 
um, guidance and very much sort of old school corporate understanding of how not only the corporate world works but how the world works and how you know self-awareness feeds into how to become a better leader so i think Mm -hmm. it was a life-changing sort of thing for me so it's it's really important that you find someone like that to challenge you and what you're doing is completely in your control and your destiny is in your control you need to take responsibility for that and you need to own whatever's happening in your career or your life or your marketing. Because one of the things I've noticed, uh, especially the more we're doing um, our work in the US and, and mm. Europe, is that Australia seems to be underrepresented in that C-suite mm. by marketers. Do you think that there's, you know, what is it that stops marketers actually being able to do what you've done, which is step into more of a management role rather than just being the marketer? or what do they call it, the colouring in department. Basically, the point was make sure as a marketer you align yourself to revenue. And I've been spoiled, I think, because, I mean, being at Dell, if you weren't aligned to revenue, you weren't there the next day. So we had to be, and so we were trained to be marketers of that ilk. Mm -hmm. But obviously that's not the case across most big brands and so now they're being told you know to be taken seriously by the c-suite and not be called the coloring in department which has got all that irresponsibility and indulgence attached to it you have to know what return you are delivering to the business in financial terms not in not in woolly sort of brand considerations Mm. that's the transition people are making but the only problem with that is that it pushes everyone towards digital and digital only because digital has this perfectly clear attributable attributable ROI. Yeah, except that people are questioning that now because there's Mm. more and more evidence that, you know, last things like last click attributions and even the the metrics around it are not necessarily converting to the return on investment. Yeah, that's correct. And and that's what I've seen in the two digital businesses that I've been, well, I'm running in Harmony, but running the marketing for Pandora, is that you can't actually get the scale and the impact you need in short periods of time without offline channels involved as well. Just for their sheer reach and and ability. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on your audience, of course. If they're below 25 or actually below 18, then you probably could, but... But even scalability then, because yeah, they're so fragmented right. over so many different platforms yeah. and things. So if there was a marketer watching this, what advice would you give them about perhaps stepping up and becoming a thought leader or, or providing leadership to mm. the category? Advice, I would say, is to not be afraid to say what you're seeing in your own business, um, even if it's unpopular. If you're in a digital think tank, everyone would say you're a dinosaur, (laughs) which has happened to me a couple of times. Um, I think, I mean, I really admire what Mark Ripson is doing at the moment in that he's standing up for what is real marketing, sort of marketing holistically, what it used to be, Mm -hmm. I think. Um, Whereas we've sort of shrunk it right down to this trendy new thing because it's so exciting and because it's so humble and and looks like it can solve everything we've sort of put all of our eggs in that basket when in fact we do need to to pull back Mm. to be good at our jobs and be successful and to grow our companies i mean we, we owe it to our businesses to explore further than what is popular Absolutely. In the scene as such. Yeah, no, absolutely agree. (laughs) Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. And thanks for joining us on The Couch. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay tuned for more On The Couch coming soon.